All right, we live up. All right. Shabbat Shalom. This is the Brothers of GMS Louisiana Saints, the New Orleans camp with another Shabbat lesson. But before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you, sincere Akiam out there. Pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And with Shabbat this Shabbat, Shabbat lesson, we're just going to get into a... Uh, Yahweh Shai's second coming. On the one hand, he's returning to save the elect of the nation of Israel, the 144,000 and the rest of the righteous one third of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as well as the Israelite foreigners who look like these heathen nations. And on the other hand, his second coming entails taking away the rulership of you heathen nations, chiefly you Edomites, the so called white people, and the uh, what inspired this lesson was a video I saw about a week ago from the brother GMS Stain the Spirit 144's channel. It was a video dealing with that movie Black Adam coming out with The Rock. And he did a beautiful breakdown on that video and going into some of the history of that comic book character Black Adam, pretty much showing that Yahweh Shai, for one, his name is Black Adam. And we know that Yahweh Shai is Adam in the reincarnation. And for two, he's played by The Rock. And what is Yahweh Shai known as? That rock, that cornerstone, that, that great millstone that's going to knock down the feet of that statue, the iron toes mixed with miry clay. He saw Edom's current beast system, that reincarnated Roman Empire, the NATO EU alliance that the U.S. is a part of. So, hey, the spirit and the vibration of Yahweh Shai's second coming is out there. And as the brother also went into with this character, Black Adam, in his, in a at the beginning of his origins, he was a slave, and they showed his, an image of him in chains with a bunch of people dressed in Egyptian garb, enslaving him and whipping him. And what should come to mind, the children of Israel in, in slavery in ancient Egypt. And Yahweh Shai was that angel that passed over on the Passover and led, led uh, Israel out of Egypt and was, and was that watchful eye over them in the wilderness. And also they said that when Black Adam came, when he got his powers, what he did was he uh, helped his people and enslaved the people around him. And that's exactly what Yahweh Shah is coming to do, to save his elect and then, and, and then begin to take down you heathen nation's rulership. And then Yahweh Shah, along with the elect, are going to enslave who's left so you can spend that first thousand years building up the kingdom of heaven. And then also Apostle Tahar reposted a clip from one of the brothers in the Jamaican camp who had an encounter with an angel. And he said in that clip that the angel came up to him and said, hey, the time is soon that y'all are about to be saved. Hey, something along those lines. So, hey, the, uh, the, as it says in Romans, our time is, is near than when we originally believed back in. So now more than ever, you should awake out of that sleep and have all 10 toes down, pushing this word as hard as you possibly can to be of that remnant, that elect number that gets beamed up with Yahweh Shai, beamed up on the chariots with Yahweh Shai and get to watch. Yahweh Shai go to work on these heathen nations. Hey, we're going to get straight into it with Matthew chapter 24. We're going to start at verse 29. Okay. It's the gospel of Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Hey, immediately after the tribulation of those days, and these days were quickly coming into Jacob's trouble. And in the in the, the the end of that tribulation is Yahweh Shai cracking those clouds, and that's going to happen uh, uh, after the, the the MOTB is mandatorily implemented, which we're getting close to. And it says, the, the, "In those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken." And those stars that have fallen from heaven, and nuclear missiles getting shot to the ends of the earth. And in the midst of all this chaos, chaos taking place is when Yahweh Shai is going to make his second coming. And as it says, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And who's in, who's in their heavens right now? The, these heathens and chiefly these Edomites, their power structure being shaken during World War III and Yahweh Shai's second coming. And we can see all these different signs, again, taking place in the news. All these different calamities of Jacob's trouble coming, talks of nuclear war, world war, war in the Middle East. All that. Keep going, at. 
Yeah. It also tells you in Romans 13 that those powers that are set up by the Father, that's that was the Roman Empire that Apostle Paul was talking about. Okay. This is uh, verse 30. It says, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and, and they shall... As a, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And what's that? That trumpet being blown, that that they got that saying, that shot heard from around the world. And, but this is going to be that trumpet blown and heard from around the world. And those crowds getting clack, cracked and that massive fathership that Yahweh is returning in, as well as, as the host of heaven coming with him to save his elect and, and make war with you heathen nations. And as it's about to say, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. On the one hand, you're going to have these heathen nations and two thirds of the nation of Israel mourning because it's, it's going to be a, a miraculous sight. And then once those chariots start shooting those laser beams onto people on top of the nuclear missiles, they're going to be mourning in terror. But then on the other hand, you're going to have the, the elect of the 12 tribes of Israel mourning tears of joy because these are the times we've been waiting for the times to, to look up and see that our salvation is near and then get, get beamed up onto the chariots. Abarat, all the brothers, and myself, and all you sincere Akim out there are, are a part of that number. Keep going mm -hmm. on. It says, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Kind. Keep going on. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And of course, uh, as pursuant to Revelation chapter 7, we know who that elect is. Those uh, 12,000 uh, 12, men from all, all 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And then when you go down later on in that chapter, it's talk, it talks about that great multitude out of every tongue, kindred, and nation. That's talking about the rest of the elect, the, the rest of the, the righteous one-third which hey, they're going to look like traditional Israelites, and then you're going to have some looking like uh, the Israelite foreigners all getting beamed up onto that chariot, gathered from the four corners of the earth. And again, these are the times we're diligently waiting for, because once that happens, all this suffering and misery we're going through is, is going to be over, and it's, and it's going to be smooth sailing from there. It's going to be, it's going to be no more worrying about demons plaguing your mind, having to go out on the highways and byways and deal with these, these goons and goblins out here, having to deal with Esau, having to deal with these heathen nations, having to deal with any bit of negativity. Time. And we can, uh, now we can jump to that first Thessalonians four, start about verse 16. Baba Kasha. Uh, kind of, it's first Thessalonians four and 16. For the, <clears throat> for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel angel, and with the trump of Yahweh, and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. A re pretty much reiterating what it's saying in Matthew chapter 24. For the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High. That trump being heard from, from one end of the earth even into the other, and the dead in Hamashiach shall arise first. Hey, the elect that are in the spirit world right now, and some of some of you brothers and, and sisters out there of that elect number that had to be put to death on this side, that once you understand these scriptures, you know that there's nothing to fear, because if you if you die in this truth, hey, you're, you're an automatic elect on that chariot with Yahweh Shai, with that new spiritual body just waiting. Yahweh Shai, and this is me being silly. But Yahweh Shai pretty much got to have his hands out, holding hold the elect back on the chariot, because just as much as he wants to, they're waiting to, to come back and save the, the rest of the elect that remain in those days. Keep going out. All right, 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Keep going. To meet, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Gosh. Wherefore comfort. Oh, you keep going that. Oh, okay. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. God, hey, it speaks for itself. Then we which are alive and remain, those the brothers that the brothers and sisters that made it made it all the way through and that didn't have to be a martyr for the testimony of Yahweh Shai, 
and remain through all these calamities shall be caught up in the clouds to shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, getting beamed up onto those chariots. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Like I was just saying, once the elect, once Yahweh Shai makes the second coming and the elect are beamed up on the chariots, that's it. That's that's game over for this age of the Gentiles, the heathen Gentiles. And that's the beginning of the eternal rulership and, and peace of the children of Israel. As it says in the very next verse, wherefore comfort one another with these words, which is exactly what we're doing with these uh, video epistles, as well as going out onto the highways and byways and waking up the elect and comforting them with these words and constantly telling you that these times are much nearer than when we believed. And you don't want to miss this, this final shot of being on, on, of that elect number, being of the first fruits in the kingdom of heaven, being saved from that second death. But that's the, that's the one side of the coin of Yahweh Shai's second coming, returning to save his elect. But a whole, a whole, another part of that side of that coin is that destruction that Yahweh Shai is bringing to you heathen nations and, and your rulerships, chiefly you Edomites, and hey, the two thirds that want to cling unto this system, because just as Yahweh Shai is bringing peace and rest first to the elect, he's also bringing mass death and destruction to everybody else. And we can uh, get that Revelation chapter six, verse two. And then from there, we can jump to Revelation chapter 19, start at verse 11, Bible Kasha. That's the book of Revelation chapter six, verse two. It says, and I, and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forward conquering and to conquer. Kind of, and that white horse is referring to Yahweh Shai and his second coming. And as it said, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and that and a bow is a weapon of war. So he's bringing that war. As it says, and he went forth conquering and to conquer, taking away the rulership of you heathen nations and sitting in his rightful place, being being the, the, the head dog, the, the, the king on the earth. Because as everything was made for Adam, everything was made for Yahweh Shai as well. And he's coming to, to claim what was rightfully, rightfully his, this world. And hey, as it also says in, in, in Romans, we're going to be joint heirs with Hamashiach. So that, that elect are, are going to come underneath Yahweh Shai being, being joint heirs with him. You're going to have the Most High first and foremost at the top, then Yahweh Shai, then King David, which if you can receive it, was the Apostle Peter in the reincarnation, the rest of the 12, the, the, the rest of the 144, the, the one third, and then the two thirds after that, that heavenly government set up in perfect order. Kind of, but to further elaborate, showing that that white horse is speaking of Yahweh Shai, we can jump to that Revelation 19, verse 11. And you could read down to about, uh, let me see. Then you read down to about verse 16. Come on, this Revelation. I've I got a precept for you too, I'll never be ready for it. You can bring your precept out first. Right, Con, this is... Uh... Psalms 45, the point is in three. I'll get straight to the point. It says, Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty. And in thy majesty, ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. Because you were speaking about the horse and the rock, you know, of course, the way he's going to ride. God. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. And who's, and who's the right hand of the Most High? Yahweh sure. Shai. And hmm. said he's going to have that sword gird, gird upon his thigh. And yeah. go... You're saying something, Yagana? No, I'm trying to get this, this thing to work. I was trying no, to, just... to uh, put some on the coming board so I can um, do this administrative oh. thing. Kind, kind. But I'm hey, want me to reread it? Uh, I'll go to what you want me to read. I'm sorry, Salaki, bro. Oh, I mean, it's good. I, 
you can uh, read verse five after I make my point, but hey, the, the right hand of the most high that that's speaking of is Yahweh Shai with that sir, that sword on his thigh, ready to come and make war, riding, riding upon that horse, that, that white horse, which is ultimately mm -hmm. talking about that 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 massive fathership chariot he's returning in because hor horses in the scriptures are, are symbolic with power and he's coming with power. He's coming with the, the, the biggest power the world's ever seen. If I can make a quick point, it's crazy how the father put the white horse on Yahweh and then put the black horse on E. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, like, but all this time it's been a white and black thing. Just, just a little food for thought. That's kind of, <laughs> hey, hey, it's, it's, it goes well, with that, 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 uh, that, that, that narrative that Esau likes to put up, that color narrative, how we're, we're called so-called black people, so we're negative, dark, and everything wrong with the world. And he's so-called white. He, he's positive, pure, and, and uh, majestic and all that. But as we're reading here, the white horse is referring to Yahweh and who are Yahweh people? Israel. And that black horse is speaking to the real black people on the earth, the real niggers, the real thugs, goons, and scum of the earth, you Edomites. That's right. You, you read verse 5 in that uh, Psalms 45, Baba Kasha? Come The Psalms 45 and 5, it says, Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemy, whereby the people fall under thee. And what is saying that Revelation 6 verse 2 is coming with a bow to shoot those, those uh, me uh, metaphorical arrows, so to speak, a hey, coming and the, the shooting those laser beams from that chariot onto the onto the, the the what is this shooting those arrows into the heart of the king's enemies, these heathen nations, beginning with these Edomites and all their, their military might, hey, specifically over in uh, the Valley of Jehoshaphat in that Middle Eastern region during the War of Armageddon, and then also over here shooting those laser beams onto Babylon, the United States of America, as well as those nuclear missiles hitting this place, just completely coming to conquer. And, 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 and destroy ship. Oh, you had a preset bot? Uh, Kabar had a good one on the comment board. Khan, you can bring it out. Now, this is uh, Revelation 11 and 15. It says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his anointed, and he shall reign forever and ever. Hey, that's a, that's a, beautiful, a beautiful precept on time. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was a great voice in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Hamashayat, and he shall reign forever and ever. Yahweh Shai taking his rightful place, being the ultimate king and, and lord over everything on the face of this earth, and everybody coming in their, in their right order. They begin with those elect being uh, joint heirs with him. As it, as it further says in uh, Revelation chapter 2, when he started around verse 25, hold fast that, hold fast that which ye have until I come, and then will I give you power over the nations to rule over them with that rod of iron. You, I got the Revelation 19. Oh, you, want it. you got a precept to mark it? I'm about to dig one out. Oh, no, right. you go ahead. You have one out? Oh, it kind of changed, but I, I get another one though. You can go ahead and bring that one out. Oh, okay, okay. Were you getting some Amawad? No, just that one from the brother. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We can go back to that Revelation 19. Come on, this Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. It says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, do he judge and make war? God. So as it says in verse 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. Going back to that white horse in Revelation 6, verse 2, Yahweh Shai returning in that massive fathership chariot. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war with that sword upon his thigh, symbolically speaking, and that bow and arrow going to conquer and make war with you heathen nations, chiefly you Edomites. Keep going, Act. It says, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. 
those many crowns being symbolic for Yahweh Shai taking away the rulership of these heathen nations. Keep going. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of our power. And of course, when you go to John chapter one, it says Yahweh Shai was the word made flesh. And that vesture dipped in blood is, is symbolic for that mass death and destruction that Yahweh Shai is coming to bring. And uh, if somebody could get me Isaiah 63, it's going to show who, who Yahweh Shai is coming to visit personally. Hey, he's coming for all you heathen nations, but there's somebody who's definitely on that uh, VIP list, so to speak. Yeah, I got a preset real fast. Okay, you got it. Now, this is um, Isaiah 11. I'm going to start at 1. It says, And there shall come forth a root out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of the out of his roots. It says, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and the spirit of and counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he shall make them of quick understanding and the in fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. And this is the point. It says, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity it says for the meat of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and and smiting the earth with the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips is going into the uh, the laser beams from this check from the chariots which is what it's going to talk about in revelation <clears throat> chapter 19 as well as second Esther's chapter 13 as it's going to say in, in Revelation 19, he opened his mouth and a sword came out. And then in 13, he opened up he, the mouth, his mouth opened up and it was uh, uh, heat and sparks and all that. And a, and a good visualization of that is that movie Independence Day <coughs> when those massive UFOs showed up and the bottom opened up like a mouth and all that concentrated heat came up and just wrecked those cities or whatever areas that hit, turning it into dust and smell of smoke. I'm gonna say this too on a on a on a small level, on a small spiritual level. The way the Lord, the way Yahweh Shai is smiting the earth and slaying the wicked now is with his men, with his word, man. You know, kind of cut them asunder. You know, that's what the Lord also said in the scriptures. I have hewed you by the by the prophets, man. He have cut many people, many doctrines <clears throat> with the word of word of his mouth through these scriptures, man, through his prophets, his men. And right, and it's, and it's true, it's un, undisputed, undefeated, undisputed, man. When it comes to these different, um, so called religions, there's you know, but go ahead. I, I got a precept, a, a real quick precept to back up what you just said. This is Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14. Wherefore, thus saith Yahweh, the power of hosts, because ye speak this word, and behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. Right. I had one. Bob Gashaw had one to, to add to what I just had. This is Job yeah. 4 and 8. It says, the point is in 9. It says, even as I have seen, Job 4 and 8, it says, even as I have seen, they that plow iniquity and, and uh, sow wickedness reap the same. By the blast of the Most High, they, sh they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. God. <clears throat> hey. Hey, that, that word being the, the blast of his of his nostrils. By the that word being the breath of his nostrils that are consuming him. Hey, his his men who have that Holy Spirit on him going out there and preaches on the highways and byways. Hey, cutting up those that come against the doctrine, but also healing those and, and spiritually purifying their gold with that spiritual fire, trying and refining them and bringing them back to their power. And then after that, when everything's said and done, that's when that, that, that real physical heat's going to come with those laser beams from the chariots as well as those nuclear missiles. Got a real quick one to back that up. Kind you got. Second Thessalonians 2 and 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And kind that goes into both points. Who He shall consume with the, the his mouth, the spirit of his mouth, 
his mouthpiece, these prophets, <clears throat> revealing that main of sin, that son of perdition, through these video epistles, as well as going out on the highways and byways, and then him coming with that that double whammy uh, punch with the with <laughs> destroying physically with the brightness of his coming, a hey, cracking those clouds and coming with those heavenly hosts, the, those fleet of chariots, and, and making short work of uh, everything that Esau Edom built and put all his blood, sweat, and tears into building just to be taken down in an hour. Can I got a precept too? Con, you got it, Doc. And we can get back to that uh, Revelation 19 verse. Uh, we have verse 14. Actually, let me see. <clears throat> yeah, we, we can go to 14. We can drop that Isaiah 63 for now. Okay, Con, it's Isaiah 66, 15. For behold, Moses will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Come, come. For be, as it says, for behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And those chariots, those unstoppable heavenly vehicles coming and shooting that concentrated heat on, onto these people and these militaries of these heathen nations being completely unstoppable. And that's why you're hearing you're hearing about all these heathen nations talking about building up a space force. And this, this, these, these, these elites know what time it is, and they're still and they're so bugged out in their minds that they think they can even hold a candle to Yahweh Shai's second coming, which again is uh, just another one of the myriad reasons why Yahweh Shai is personally coming to visit you Edomites. For one, you afflicted the apple of uh, his father's eye and really the apple of his eye, his brothers and sisters. And also, you're so proud and arrogant to think that you can stop him and you can stop prophecy from coming to his fulfillment because Yahweh Shai was Isaac as well in the reincarnation. And he was the one that gave you your blessing of the sword. All these all these ideas you get to make your to make your, your weapons and your different uh, tactics out here came from that blessing Yahweh Shai gave you as Isaac. And he's coming to, and he's coming back to take that rent a blessing from you. <clears throat> we can go back to uh, that Revelation uh, nineteen. God, this Revelation nineteen and fourteen, it says, "And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean." Hey, the host of heaven come up with Yahweh shine that massive fathership chariot, all these, these other multitudes of chariots. Keep going at like, so like, so like. Right. it says, and out of his mouth go with a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress. Of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty Power, hey, that sharp sword coming out of his mouth, that concentrated heat, the so-called laser beams being fired from the chariots, and as it says, and with that he should smite the nations and shall rule them with the rod of iron. And like I've been saying throughout this video, we're going to be joined heirs with Yahweh Shai, so we're also going to rule over these heathen nations with the rod of iron, ruling over them rigorously. If somebody could give me a Revelation chapter two. Start verse 25 real quick. Come on, I got you. It's Revelation chapter 2, verse 25, which is in red letters. Yahweh Shai speaking. It says, But that which you have already, hold fast till I come. Keep going. And he, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And Yahweh Shai is speaking to his elect. All, what we have already, we should hold fast till he comes. And we can we can clearly see that that time is at hand. And really, this isn't the time to be getting weak. You should be having that fire on your spirit to just be be going forward and, and staying in this word as hard as you possibly can. So we can so we can be a part of that the joint be joint heirs with you. How was shy? If I can get that word power in the Greek real quick. Con, you got it. Doc. This is Strong's G eighteen forty nine, which is Exousia. It says power of choice, liberty of doing as one pleases physical and mental power, and it says the power of authority, the power of influence, the power of rule or government. Okay. 
Hey, that's what Yahweh Shah is coming with, that power of authority to do what he wants, of course, in righteousness. And with us being joint heirs with him, we're going to have that power of authority, the, the, being the, the heads of that government to come, the kingdom of heaven, doing what we want according to the law, statutes, and commandments. And there's, right. there's not going to be no no's or no, we can't do that or anything like that ever again. It's going to be our way or straight to the spirit world. Right. It says authority over mankind. <laughs> authority over, hey, authority not just over a country, but authority over mankind. And what it is right. saying in uh, Psalms chapter 2, I'm going to get it real quick. Yahweh I said that I, I will make, uh, I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. The uttermost parts of the earth is talking about the entire planet as a possession for Yahweh Shai. And again, we're going to be joint heirs of that. God. It says, the power of him whose will and commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed. Oh, Khan, Khan. And you can't get around that. And that's, what, that's, that's what's coming to those that diligently stay in this word and, and, and don't get weak. God. It says, one who possesses authority, the leading and more powerful among created beings, superior to man. Kind. <laughs> that, that elect. The, those, uh, as it says in Zechariah, hey, the, the feeblest among them shall be as David, speaking God. of the two-thirds. But the house of David, that elect number, are going to be as God. Yeah. That's just, that's something that's beyond comprehension for our minds right now. It's one of those things that we're just going to have to wait and see is definitely one of those things that when Paul was in the spirit world, it was so beautiful. He couldn't utter it. You can't even put words to what all that entails. Yeah. It says the sign of a regal authority, a crown. God. But uh, getting back to revelation two and 27, it says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter. Shall they be broken into shivers? Even as I received in my father. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. It's beautiful. Uh, let me see. You can read verse 16 out in back in Revelation 19. This Revelation 19 and 16. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of King and Lord of Lords. A point blank period. Going back to that precept Kabar brought out, all, all the kingdoms of this earth are given unto the Lord and to his Hamashayah. Everything under his subjection and, and through proxy to us, everything under, under the elect subjection as well. Uh, and uh, just to further hammer in that point, we can go to 2nd Ezra chapter 13. Started about uh, about verse six. Back second Ezra thirteen. What? You start about verse second Ezra thirteen, verse five. Yeah, a real quick one. While we get that. Oh, you got it. Three. Come. This uh, First Corinthians fifteen and twenty four. Then cometh the end when he shall de have delivered up the kingdom of the Most High, even the Father when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. God, you, got that. you, you can break that one down. Yeah, Yahweh is going to put everything under his feet. And it says the next verse, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So all principalities, all spirits, all governments, everything that you can see and even things that you can't see, they're all going to be beneath Yahweh Shai's feet. And as you, you brought out in our Romans 8, we're going to be joint heirs with him. So everything that's under Yahweh Shai's feet is going to be subsequently under our feet also. We're joint heirs. You got it, right? Hey, yeah. And, and that's not just talking about this, this planet, planet Earth. As Yahweh Shai said, in my father's house are many mansions. many mansions. If it were not so, I would not tell you. Hey, after that thousand years, hey, we're, we're going to branch off from this planet and, and lay down the law to the rest of this universe. That's going to be put under under the feet of Yahweh Shai and his elect. So there's, there's, there's just an innumerable amount of things coming for coming for those that, that hold fast and stand firm to this word. Yeah. You got it, Kaya. This second, Ezra chapter 13. Where you want me to start that out? 
You can start at verse three. Come. It says, and I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, speaking of Yahweh. And back in that Revelation 19, what did it say? That there were there are many of them clothed in white coming on horses, the thousands upon thousands, as it says in uh I think it's Somewhere in Psalms it says, and, and the and the angels of the most higher. 68. 68. 68 count. 20. 20. Count. Mm -hmm. Thou, the 20. angels of the most higher, thousands upon thousands, roughly paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. And those thousands that were coming with that man that waxed strong. I think that's it. 17. 68 and 17. 68, 68 and 17. 17. <laughs> I see that with conviction. Hey, if, you, if, you, <laughs> if you got it, you can read it real quick, I. Yeah, this is Psalm 68 and 17. The chariots of Yahweh are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Yahweh is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Hey, it's even saying it's like shooting crabs in a barrel can't even compare, can't even compare to how much of a, a one-sided battle this is gonna be. Because one angel, if if he got the command to, could destroy the entire planet. So you're getting a, an innumerable multitude of angels and chariots, as well as Yahweh coming to make war against this realm of man. So you, you heathens, you Edomites, you elites, you, you have no hope and you know it. Yeah, they're even talking about it now when uh, on the news, Fox News is saying, look, we have to take these, these UFOs seriously. You got all these veterans coming out saying, look, back in the 60s, these chariots were were turning off nuclear buttons. They were reappearing, disappearing. These are these are no longer conspiracy theories. This is this is right in the news, man. Kind, kind, hey. mainstream. Kind. Oh no, you got it. Oh no, I'm just agreeing with the brother. Yeah, it's mainstream news now. You know, kind. ain't a bunch of kooks no more. Mm hmm. Hey, the, these chariot sightings have become so pronounced across this planet over these past couple of years. That as the brothers have been saying, they got to talk about it on mainstream outlets like Fox News, CNN, and then you've got uh, these different governments coming out and saying, yeah, we've we've known about UFOs for decades. We just had them classified, but we can't hide it anymore. So we got to come out with committees to try to explain it. And then you got a, a new documentary on Showtime talking about the, the chariots. Hmm. And then, of course, brothers in their everyday lives are constantly seeing chariots. And it, it's, it's as we get closer and closer to the end, these chariot sightings are going to become so much more pronounced that it's going to get to the point to where Esau can't even play it off. P, um, sit, expect to see situations like this. People just walking in a city and out of nowhere, a cloud just turns into a chariot to where everybody can see it and record it. And then it just disappears. Yeah, I got something real fast. God, you got it. This is uh, Matthew 52, 26, and, my bad, Matthew 26 and 52. It says, Then Yahweh shall say unto, unto him, <clears throat> Put again thy sword unto, the, unto, the, unto his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. It says, and Thou that I cannot now pray unto my father, and he shall presently give me more than more than uh 20,000 20 my bad I'll read that again I messed it up think it thou that I cannot now pray to my father and he shall presently give me more than uh, what is it, 20 legions of angels 12 legions 12 legions of angels kind and what that reminds me of is in a in a kings with Elisha where the Syrians were coming against Israel at that time. And the uh, told opened up his servant's eyes and showed that there were chariots of fire in the sky. Showing and that I, and I, had something, I had something right here on the app. Okay. <clears throat> and it's, it goes into legions. It says legions of the Latin Lego or Lego to collect or choose was a particular division of battlements of Roman soldiers, which at different times contained different numbers. In the time of our Savior, it was probably contained of six, uh, 6,200 
uh, and 6,200 or uh, 300 so 300 horses, uh, 12 of which whom which whom uh, amounted to 78,000 men. Come on, man. That's a, that's a lot of angels and chariots. And what did it say? Could, could I not uh, presently call 12 legions? And we know that that number 12 means completion. So like I was saying, it, it reminds me of uh, that account in, in Kings when the Syrians were coming against Israel at that time and uh, Elisha's servant got scared. But then Elisha opened up his eyes and showed that there was a, a host of, of chariots in the sky that could have made short work of these Syrians with their horses and chariots back then which is going to be no different with these heathens in their modern day chariots, these tanks, these fighter jets, this tinker toy space force they have, you name it. And brothers, yes, we have that same power following around with us today, as it says in Psalms 34, and the angels of the most high camp around those that fear him. And, and you brothers got to believe this. Yeah, it says more of us than of them. Kind. Yeah, I got that if you want it. Yeah, you can bring it out real quick, Kai. Gone. It's uh, 2 Kings chapter 6, and starting at uh, verse 14. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of the Most High was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Question mark. And he answered, Fear not, for they be Salakia, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Okay. And as it says in Romans 5. Romans 15, everything written aforetime was written for our learning. What did it say? Israel was compassed about with their enemies, the Syrians back then. And what's it saying? Isaiah chapter 59, the enemy's going to come in like a flood. And in Luke, it says they're going to they're going to cast a trench about us. Hey, we're going to be in the midst of our enemies when Yahweh Shire returns to save his elect. As it says in, in Revelation 11, I believe, verse 12, and they were called up into the clouds and their enemies beheld them. So, hey, that, that fiery host of chariots back then that helped Israel are going to be back here today to, to, to come pass us around in that protection and save us from our enemies. But even before then, hey, some brothers are going to get spiritual powers and the Most High is going to set up that standard to protect his elect until that time comes of getting beamed up on the chariots. God, any brothers have any uh, more precepts? Yeah, I got one. Con, you got it, and then we can go back to that uh, second edge of 13. All right, this wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Actually, be, oh, start, st start at verse 1, Ock, and, and you, whatever, whatever verses okay. you want to read down to, you can break them down yourself. Okay. All right, verse 1, 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness for the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Verse 2, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all they look for. And yeah, you know, they made no account of the righteous man labors. You know, as it says in first one, you know, they made no account. You know, they just shoo shooed and, you know, didn't think uh, the righteous man was ever going to get rewarded. You know, that the righteous man was just a joke out there hanging out on the block week in, week out, yelling at the top of their lungs. You know, it's like, oh, it ain't, ain't nothing ever going to happen. You know, they always say, you know, they're going to see the sword. You know, we're going to see famine. You know, that this so-called black man's going to come back. And, you know, where, where yet? You know? And then, like I said, they're going to be amazed at the strangeness of salvation because, like I said, it's going to be that chariot. And it's going to be a bunch of chariots. And they're going to be, a, a you know, a terrible fear because it's going to be like, 
it's gonna be like straight up. It's gonna be a blink right in your face. And you know, all your life you've been told, oh, it's a little green man, a little green, gray man or whatever in there. And you're gonna think it's aliens, but really, you know, it's just the angels and yeah, I will shout. You know, to the man of the Lord, we won't be, you know, with terrible fear, but the two thirds and, and the heathens, you're gonna be pissing your pants in that day. You know? Kind of. And hey, that, that goes into uh, the, the first part that we were talking about with Yahweh Shai's second coming and the elect getting beamed up on the chariots for salvation. And then as and when we get back into that second Ezra 13, we're going to go into the second part. Yahweh Shai bringing, bringing war against you heathen nations and you standing in great fear that the tribes of this earth mourning because that, that vicious, violent, uh, righteous indignation and judgment is coming on you. And, and nothing gonna be able to stand in 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 the presence of the power and the majesty and the glory. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. But uh, we can get back to uh, the second Ezra thirteen, Baba Kasha. Khan, the second Ezra thirteen, and again three. And I beheld and lo, that man went strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fell it when it filled the fire. Okay, keep going. And after this, I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And of course, uh, that multitude of men getting gathered from the four corners of heaven is talking about these different heathen nations getting gathered down into the valley of Jehoshaphat for the war of Armageddon. And it was says to subdue the man that came out of the sea, talking about Yahweh coming out of the, the Shemayim, or the waters uh, of heaven coming out of the sky, cracking those clouds. With that, with that heavenly host, it says, "But I beheld and looked, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain, and flew upon it." Keep going. But I would have, I, but I would have seen the region, or the place where, where, where of the hill was graven, and I could not. Okay, that massive fathership chariot, Yahweh is returning in. Which, as Ezra just said, it was so it was so big he couldn't see the end of it. Which again, when you watch that movie Independence Day, that's how they show those uh, UFOs. It was so massive that whenever it came over the land, it literally blotted out blotted out the sun, and it was almost like uh, noon or evening or nighttime underneath the ship. And what what's interesting is the, the final battle in that movie took place in a desert in like the Nevada desert in the movie, but we know what that was really talking about, that desert of the Middle East, that the Valley of Jehoshaphat. You can keep going, Ike. Verse 7, but I would have seen the region or the place whereof, whereof the hill was graven, and I could not. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid, and yet durst fight. And if you find yourself in the Valley of Jehoshaphat in that day and, and you're scared to fight, it's, it's going to be too late at that point. As I said, they were scared, but they yet durst fight. The Most High is going to put the spirit on you to fight and get judged and get put to death. It Keep says, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. I could, I got a precept for that too. Kind, of, you got it. Doc. Yeah, you can break it down. Doc. This is um, this is Daniel's <clears throat> eight, and I'm gonna start at twenty four and read it twenty five. And it says, "And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. He shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper in the practice and by practices." And shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And this is the point. And through his policies, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hands. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. And be, and by peace 
shall he destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of the princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Hey, that's, that's talking about Esau, more specifically these elites using his, his using his using uh causing his craft to prosper by his policy out here. It's like it. And through his policy, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, using all these different deceptive means and witchcraft to uh to to blind the world and put that cover and cast over him to follow after his ways. And it says he's going to try to go against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. When you go into Ezekiel chapter 21, it, it further elaborates on this with that great glittering sword talking about Esau contending, contending with the rod of the son of the most high, speaking of Yahweh Shai, and that sword getting broken by that rod. They getting broken, broken into shivers like the potter's clay. Because as we've been saying throughout this video, when when you you heathens, you Edomites, and your military and your space force goes against your Hawashai, it's gonna be a first round knockout. It's it's gonna be the worst ass beating existence has ever seen. And as it says in Revelation 18, a hey, your, your main power structure, Babylon the Great, is going to go down in an hour. Hundreds of years to build up this uh, NW0 of yours, this great work, just in one hour to be turned into ashes, dust, and smell of smoke. Verse 10. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue, he cast out sparks and tempers. Hey, talking about uh, those laser beams that concentrated heat getting fired from the chariots. And it, it goes to show how how insignificant Yahweh Shai is going to look at you heathens and, and your military might in that day, as it says up in verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence and the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. He just stood there, not giving a second thought to it because it's insignificant. Your your worms, and a, and a, there's always one scene from this movie, Watchmen, I always think about when I read uh, Second Entrance 13, where you had a character called Ozymandias, who is, who is supposed to be like the elites and, and Esau and all that, going against Dr. Manhattan, which is supposed to be like Yahweh Shai because he had uh, uh, spiritual powers. And uh, Dr. Manhattan told Ozymandias the work because uh, Ozymandias in that movie was known as the world's smartest man. And Dr. Manhattan said to him, the world's smartest man poses no more threat to me than its smartest termite. <laughs> just, mm. just, just complete insignificance. And that's how Yahweh Shai looks at you, looks at you heathens and especially you Edomites and all this military might you're going to try to come against them with just termites and ants that he's going to step on. And grasshoppers. If I can make a point, the man that created, that received the word from our power along with the 144,000 to create the, the creatures of the Most High, it don't dawn on you that obviously he got the blueprint to destroy the creatures of the Most High? <laughs> uh -huh. I got that too. That, I, that's all I had to say. Like I got, nothing I'm else. The back hey Kaya, that, that doesn't plague your mind. That gotta plague your mind. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, real quick to back that up. It's Isaiah 10 and 15. Shall the axe boast itself against him that he was there with? Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> you, 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 you can't, you got to bow down to your creator. Like, it's like, and this man knows this. And there's nothing he can do to uh, rewind his thoughts or forward his thoughts. Like, he got to just, he got to sit there and just do what the word of the Lord said. Like, he's going to do it. There's no way he's not going to do it. He's going to fulfill every word. Because, hey, as I said, can the axe boast against him that, that Hewitt would with it? An uh, instrument is nothing without the person wielding the instrument. And yeah. we're, all just, mm -hmm. we're all just puppets playing our part in Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai's movie. So the Most High gave you, the Most High gave you, gave you your ability to get where you're at right now. Isaac gave, 
Yahweh Shai is Isaac gave you your blessing and all that, just so you could get to this point and fulfill prophecy, just so he could come against you and completely wipe the floor with you. And nothing, nothing can be taken away from that or nothing can alter prophecy. You're, you're uh, sleepwalking into your destruction and your slavery and, and all that. And we're, yeah. and we're, and we're not sleepwalking. We're walking in the day towards towards our salvation and towards being of that elect number. I brought the desire of that number. Hey, you gotta feel like a loser or a dirtbag to know that you walking right into your grave, man. Yeah. All right, and there's nothing you could do to to you know take back your steps or nothing. Like you gotta feel like a great loser. All right, like yeah, you you, you just gotta feel bad, bro. Like in this. In this and like you say, he know because he put it in his heart to know, like, you know, he knows. But he's just fighting it with all his might, man. <laughs> yeah, if the Lord actually, yeah. uh, the scripture tells you the Lord created the smith. Like, he didn't just, it's not just that he's a tool of the Lord. He's also a creation of the Lord. So just, just imagine you in a movie, you're the villain. You read the script. The script tells you how you're going to die, but you got to do it anyway. You, you can't change <laughs> the script. You're just an actor. Can't say, well, I, I don't, I don't like the last twenty pages. We gotta, nah, man, <laughs> you the villain. Yeah, good kind. Hey, good. keep going in that scripture. Kind that you had. Kind. It says, "Shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it?" Question mark. As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. Keep going. Therefore shall the Lord, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like a burning of a fire. And who the fat ones is, man? The elite bankers. And it says he's going to make leanness amongst them. Read it again. Time. Therefore shall Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness. And under his glory, he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. Yeah, these 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 elite bankers, starting with the, the the Rothschilds, man. You know, in back then, back then, when this thing was just hitting YouTube, all right, and and and, and gaining and gaining momentum, it was a it was an article. Out deep, uh, Evelyn Rothschild himself back then, in two thousand six, was was worked so called over. Over, I think, six hundred trillion dollars, man, some shit like that. So imagine today, what this man is worth. They are the fat ones. They're the ones that's sitting high on above all nations right now, man. Even in the, even in the time when when uh, the Lord gave the Moabite, uh, I think it's what the name was, uh, Balaam, Balaam, the prophecy, man. That he and they said that he said that uh, Amalek should be the first of the nations, man. Okay. And these, are, you best believe mm -hmm. these elites are the first of the nation. They're the fat ones sitting on high. They own Hollywood, the news, uh, different, all the businesses of America. They own America, man. They're the fat ones. And they said the Lord going to send them leanness. All right? And under, and under his glory, he shall he kindle a burning like a burning of a, of a flame. You know? Yeah. You got that. I think, in, I think somewhere in Psalms it says they're enclosed in their own fatness. Yeah, it thinks yeah. another one that says in Psalms he waxed. Uh, he says something about they wax it frat, they shine. It's another one for the elites. I know they say I know there's one about the pastors, but it's one about the elites too. We uh, say something something uh, close to that, if I'm not mistaken. And hey, when when uh, when a fat person when a fat person uh, goes lean, so to speak, what's that a sign of? They've been losing their wealth. Them losing their ability to feed themselves, so they gotta they gotta go on a crash a crash course diet, so to speak, and that's what's coming coming to you heathens, but then with you elites, and that fatness is gonna be taken from you. That the fatness, that position, that wealth, all that, and you're gonna yeah, go back like, to your rightful. My bad. Go ahead. And you're gonna go back to your rightful place, being the tail, while we're gonna go back to our rightful place, being the head with our power. You have a Hashem. You have a shine. Yeah, like uh like that show used to come on back in the day. I think it was like 2010, 2008. You used to have a show with uh, Paris Hilton. She used to go around doing so-called daily house shows. 
and that and that numbskull, she couldn't even boil water to make to make her to boil eggs, man. She didn't know how to do it. She was she was just dumb as hell. So imagine, cause she's a part of that. She's a part of them that Uber rich, the Uber, the Uber Edomite rich over here. So imagine the first 30, 30 minutes of the kingdom of heaven for her. It's, it's, it's over with, man. Warren Buffett, all right, Warren Buffett. These these Rothschilds, the, the, the Rockefellers, these Uber rich families. Imagine the first hour of slavery for them, man. These people never touched it, did nothing. They ain't got a callus on their goddamn hands, man. Never seen work a day in their life. Imagine, imagine how it's gonna be for them, man. It's not gonna be good. Kind. We can go back to uh, we can go back to that second Ezra thirteen. We're at verse eleven, and you can uh, read down to verse thirteen. Now. Right, the second Ezra thirteen eleven, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burned them up every one so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke when I saw this I was afraid hey soldiers getting burned up the tanks getting burned up, the fighter jets, everything just becoming dust and smell of smoke. Nothing but smoke in heaps. And whatever whatever's left, as it says in Ezekiel chapter 39, those carcasses are going to be a, a feast for the, the fowls of heaven. So it's, hey, it's not looking good for those that aren't, aren't in that elect number, and especially those that, that happen to be of that, uh, that, that, that multitude of men from the four corners of the earth now in, brought down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Keep going out. These other, these other oh. numbskull I know in the world that I work with, his, his, his damn son just went and joined the Marines and shit, man. There's a lot of you Jakes I know going, 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 uh, sign your ass up for that military, man, just to get a, a couple $20,000, uh, Twenty thousand dollars and shit, man, to, to be in the army and shit. You you don't know that you about to fight against the Lord Himself, literally, man. The Lord Yahweh by Yahweh Shai Himself, you finna you finna fight against Him and the angels, man. Uh -huh. Whether your whether your black ass or your brown ass or your Native American ass is on a boat or in the plane, Lord Lord forbid you be one. Of, I know another chick. He he a fighter pilot in the army. Like he he can fly the jets and shit, man. You gonna get your ass tore out the frame, man. <laughs> You gonna get your ass tore out the front. You gonna get an up close personal laser beam straight in the cockpit of that shit, man. You niggas in the yeah. submarines, the Lord gonna allow Leviathan to get you niggas in the submarines and shit. You eat mice and shit. You know it's not gonna be it's not gonna be a pretty show, man. God. You know? Hey, there was a brother that had a vision about uh about the battle in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Or he it was a vision to where he saw fighter jets fighting against the chariots and the chariots were so cold that they shot a laser beam and it hit the pilot and, and disintegrated him, but the plane was still intact and just kind of glided and crashed on the ground. God damn. <laughs> Some of you might get that gun smoke like that, man. Kind of. And hey, if man... That'd be if, mercy. <laughs> if, if you... If if you come across this word and, and you're still in the military or joining the military, hey, you you getting destroyed by your Hawashai as the cherry on top. Before then, you're gonna have to get the big pokey, so that's gonna mess you up, and then and then you're gonna get disintegrated. If you're a marine, they got that saying, first to fight, and, and in this case it is the first to die. The first to die a horrific <clears throat> death. Okay, yeah, like you're saying, them Jakes back at yeah, you're yeah, military. Military Jakes, when you get killed in this World War Three, and especially if you get killed by your highway shot with the chariots, man, that'd be an honorable death for you niggas, you know? Because <laughs> all your life, you might, oh, you got it out? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna add it when you uh, get finished. Yeah, because you niggas never mounted up to anything, so hey, by your highway shot killing y'all, man, you know, that, that'd be an upgrade for you. Yeah, we and we tell you all the time on the block, you're not gonna get a, a twenty gun salute. You're not gonna get a uh, your mama get a knock on the door, and get that that wicked ass pyramid 
pyramid shaped uh American flag. American flag. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not gonna get none of that because you ain't coming back. Your ass gonna get disintegrated. They ain't gonna be able to find you, man. You're gonna get that <laughs> Jimmy Hoffa action. You know, the Lord Himself gonna turn into a CW, man. And <laughs> pick you niggas, man. I'm talking about get that. I'm talking about that. Lord Himself gonna get that. 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 Uh, <laughs> What is Jason Boyhe, uh Michael Myers, that scream action, man. Lord will give it to you himself out there on, on the battlefields of the World War III. You're going to get that action, man. Mm-hmm. You niggas going to be in them, the 50 cows shooting at the damn the, the angels and shit. Because a lot of you niggas, like the brother, one of you brother said earlier, I had, uh, had to do something real quick, but I heard you brother from afar. One of you brother say, you said, you, you brother was talking about, uh, Independence Day or something like that. A lot of you niggas think they're little green men and shit, little gray, okay. long mm-hmm. green men and shit. You gonna find out those are those are the, the angels of the Lord, man. Ain't gonna be no uh, Will Smith action when you punching the shit out the angel. You niggas, you niggas mm-hmm. gonna get the punch, man. Mm-hmm. You gonna get the punch and the dust, man. Go ahead. Uh. Hey, shit, another. Another another movie. It's a silly movie, but uh, in Mars Attacks, that was another movie that showed some soldiers fighting in a desert against the aliens. And when they got hit by the laser beam, everything disintegrated, but just left their skeletons burnt to a crisp. Right. Damn. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna say something too. We in a time. We also in a time where, like that, you know, that brother down there in Jamaica. He was able to, you know, because it's in the scriptures now that we're going to be entertained by angels. Sometimes you entertain angels unaware. Like like that brother said, he had his face covered up, so there ain't no way this particular person, as a person, could have known him. And he said what he said to him. We're in them times where those things, those out-of-the-world things finna happen, man. All right? Those things that, you know, you once think, you once didn't see, they're finna happen on a, on a bigger, larger scale, man. All right? You're gonna see angels. You're gonna have encounters, man. You know, and, and Lord willing, what that angel said, we hope it's true. We hope, we hope we get the hell on out of here, man. God. Uh, since uh, Kaya left, either I'm a water Samakia. Could you get me a back in Second Ezra 13? Read verse 12, and we'll close it out in 13. Oh, I got you. It's uh back in Second Ezra 13, verse 12. Afterward saw I the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. And hey, this is this is what that 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 get multitude you want to be a part of, that peaceable multitude that elect. You don't want to be a part of them uh them men, that multitude of men gathered from the four corners of the earth down in, down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. Keep going now. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad. Some were sorry, and some of them were bound. And some were glad. The, the, the elect that, that, that got beamed upon the chariots and found salvation, some were sorry, and some were bound. And that's talking about these heathens going into slavery, beginning with the elites, the first crops of slaves. When you go into Psalms uh, 149, it says to bound their kings with chains of iron and, and, their, and their nobles with fetters of iron. Yeah, that's that's going to be a that's going to be a sight to see a scene that's going to be a, a beautiful scene man because you, you you elite bankers want to run to these bunkers underground cities on the on the world on the water cities and shit man because they, they, these things are true they ain't just sending they ain't just sending food or they're not just going to the space station every month down there in florida just to be going to the space station they're sending supplies and equipment so those elite bankers, some old ass elite bankers, they can survive World War Three, man. But it's gonna be a very, mm-hmm. it's gonna be a very uh, beautiful day, man. When all the smoke gets cleared, all the all the nukes get used, and the dust settles, and you getting your you getting your little red asses pull up out of those uh, bunkers, man, by your goddamn necks and get chain slapped on you, man. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get drug about it. You're not gonna get. You're not gonna get a, a happy. Uh, you know, how you, you know how they put people in the car and the, the squad car all soft and open the door, put his head down. No, we're gonna drag the shit out out of those bunkers, man. Mm-hmm. And wherever you at, you can't hide, man. 
You got That's metal cool. doors. You got reinforced doors. We gonna break them shits down, man. We gonna we gonna come up in there. You can you can do whatever you want to do. It's not gonna help you, man. And you, you best believe you wonder why these at least bankers so old. And the Lord has been keeping them around. I mean, what well, David just died, right? I think that was David Rockefeller. Yeah, yeah. He he he. All he got to do is look for a slavery coming to him. You know, all of them, all mm -hmm. of them. But he he getting a head start. <laughs> you know, he's getting a head start on what's to come, man. So you, the rest of you, man, that's that's preserved. You preserved for slavery, man. God. Even that other little thing over there, uh, the queen, the queen ass man. What up, we can do? Yeah. They're gonna get that. Go ahead. They're gonna get that. They're gonna get that Saddam Hussein treatment. You remember when they found him and pulled him out of that hole and he had a beard? He was all disheveled yeah. looking, and the soldiers like posed and t and were smiling while they had him by his hair. That's how we're gonna do you, elites. Yeah, we're gonna slap you. Oh, yeah. slap your ass, man. God. So we're gonna uh, show up in your bunker like bro man from the fifth floor. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> you can be in the in the you know dining hall. Next thing you know, you are gonna see a bunch of Jake with a bunch of beards, man. And you know, a lot of you you leave bankers, man. In order for you to, 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 to formulate this this big elaborate lie that you have been doing for for. The short season that you've been ruling, you know the truth, man. You know what's going to happen. There's no goddamn possible way all of a sudden now, Area 51, all these different UFO stories were so fake. It was so much of a gimmick that now they are true. And you have scared yourself silly to where you have you have formed a space force, man. All right? You've been, you're getting prepared. You're like everybody else is prepping. Esau prepping, man. Esau knowing. That's why you also, I think, over there in California... And it's somewhere else on the, I think in Connecticut somewhere, they got these super powerful, uh, they got these super powerful scopes, man. And they say that there's another one that's in space. They they uh they put out there, saying that they they looking basically they put these 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 satellites out there with these special radars and shit on them, so they can see the Lord when he come, man. They can actually try to catch the Lord when he when he uh makes his makes his uh, uh, appearance, man. But he's still gonna catch you off guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a thief in the night. <clears throat> There's no way around it. God. You can you can reread verse 13 from the top back. God. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 13. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, and some of them were bound. And others some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awed and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Hey, and are we not being showed these wonders right now through, through uh, the, our understanding of these scriptures and being able to preach through these video epistles and coming out onto the highways and byways preaching this word? Hey, this is, this as the elder says, this is, this is, the dirtiest job out there, but it's also the greatest job out there, the greatest work that's going to come with the greatest reward as long as you stand firm to it. Hey, what did you, how should I say? I believe in, uh, it's, I believe it's in Luke chapter 10. Many great kings and prophets and men have desired to see these things which ye see and to hear them and have not heard them or seen them. And, but ye see them and hear them. Yeah, how I was speaking to his disciples in the past on seeing his first coming, but he's also speaking to his disciples who are living today, who are about to see his second coming and who are seeing all these great signs and wonders of the end times we're living in before the ushering into the kingdom of heaven. Hey, uh, I'm a wide for the brother. Can you get uh, Daniels 5 and 24 and read to 27 for the brother? I was trying to look for this other one. I had this one. I'm trying to look for this other one before we get out of here. Kind of I'm find it. It's the book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. <clears throat> mene, mene, tekel, I'm Sherson. Is that how you say it out? I think it's Ufar, a farson. A farson, kind, kind. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, 
the most high have numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Read verse 27 at. Con, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Hey, and we heard them stories out there. You elites using CERN to try to, to try to contact the spirit world, and you got a message back that said, Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. And the most I was saying, hey, you, your kingdom is, is, is at an end. It's it's been weighed in the balance and showed to be insufficient. And hey, you just gotta wait. You gotta you gotta wait and walk into fulfilling your part in prophecy, trying to fight against the most high son, and then getting taken out, being the first fruits of slavery, and then after that thousand years, you along with the rest of your people getting cold from this planet permanently. I got I got it. Uh I was thinking about this one. Uh, <clears throat> this is uh we can if you wanna you about to end it up, Kai you you got it up. This is Job twenty one and um sixteen. It says, "Lo, their good is not in their hands. The counsel of the wicked is far from me." It says, "How art, how oft is the candle of the wicked put out, and, and how oft cometh the destruction unto them." The most high distributed sorrows in his anger. They are as stubble before the wind and as shift before the storms carry it away. It says, For the most the most high lay it up his iniquity for his children. He rewarded him and he should know it. Hey, the most high <clears throat> lays up iniquity for his children. And you at least elites and, and these other Edomites didn't escape. You did all you did all your wickedness in the past, and the most high has laid up that iniquity for your children, which is you in the reincarnation. And we're living in the times to where you're finally gonna pay that 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 bar tab. Hey, and it's gonna be paid with your blood. Yeah, pay in full, man. Like the movie. It's kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pay in full, man. You just been ringing up a tab for years and years and years, and then it's gonna come a time where that bartender, that owner of that bar gonna say, Hey, today, Johnny. You gotta pay it in full. And if you can't pay mm -hmm. it, what do they do? You gotta wash dishes. And what that what mm -hmm. can that be equivalent to in the kingdom? You being a slave. Slavery. Slavery. Mm -hmm. That's right, man. And it's as it's as simple, it's as simple as that. And if but, you uh, don't want and if you don't if you don't want if you don't do that, what happens? You get an ass beaten, man. Kind of. Mm -hmm. And hey, with, with us being in Abarat Desire, we're of that number. With us being uh, that elect in the kingdom, hey, we're gonna want you to not want to do it. We're gonna want you to buck up and, and be a be a asshole. You know why? Because we're gonna take personal pleasure in in, in putting our, our foot on the neck of our enemies. And shit, even if you even if you are doing doing a good job, you're still gonna get your shit kicked in. <laughs> Definitely. So, did uh, any uh, any brothers have any more precepts or any points they want to make? Yeah, I'm looking for this one last one real fast. Okay. I'm going to get it. I'm right here on top of it somewhere. It's just like but, a bunch but of again, hey, But again, these are the times we're, we're diligently waiting for. And these are the times that are, that are near at hand. And, and yeah, the, right. the, the, the testimony that that Benjamite brother in the Jamaican camp had, I, I watched it this morning when I woke up, and that, that, uh, that put a fire on me for the rest of the day. Uh, that gave me shivers that uh, that that he uh, uh, that an angel came to him and said, hey, "Look, hey, it's getting close. It's almost time for for you to be mm -hmm. saved." Yeah, it's uh, come on now. It's getting ridiculous. I might have, I might have lost the page to it, but I know it says, uh, "Thou art the art of all mischief of the Hebrews." It's in the Apocrypha, in the Maccabees. It's another part to to the. Con. I lost the page. Second Maccabees seven and thirty one. Let me see seven thirty one. Oh uh, yeah, that's it. And and go to stop at stop at thirty six. I I think it's thirty six. Come. This is the second book of Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 31. 
and thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of Yahweh. For and we hey, suffer. This is talking about, this is talking about the, the, se the seven brothers, the seven brothers that were getting, uh, that were getting tortured by Antiochus. And those brothers, <clears throat> those brothers withstood those deaths manfully. And, and I, I believe it's going to go into the next verses, but pretty much what they said is, hey, we, we, we know what's to come with us, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven. But as for you, you're going to inherit, inherit destruction. You're going to inherit payback. Yeah, it says, for we suffer because of our sins. That's why we, we go through all of these, these tribulations. That's why we're at the bottom. That's why we're under the curses. We suffer because of our sins. Verse 33, and though the living power be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. Hey. Because no matter, hey, we went off and we did things that were deserving to be put off. But the Most High made that promise that Israel would never be put off or put out. Hey, right. we went through our chastening. We suffered for our sins. And that time is at an end. And, and the time of us us reaping, reaping what we've always been guaranteed is at hand. The kingdom of heaven, dominion, rulership, sovereignty, mm -hmm. peace. Done. Being being truly at one with our power, with the law, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts. God, let me read that again. It says, "Yet shall he be at one again with his servants." God, which that's what the word atonement means. It's a compound word meaning at one. And Yahweh shall is the atonement for the nation of Israel. Verse thirty-four. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes. Lifting up thy hand against the servants of the Most High. Hey, what is this saying, Obadiah? The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Kind. Hey, you thought, and hey, brothers, uh, some brothers have made a good point. Hey, if you if you've been in power, this is speaking about Antiochus and the Greeks back then, but speaking about Esau today. If you've been kicking ass and in rulership for the past five hundred years, of course you're gonna feel you're gonna feel on top of the world like you can never go down. But the Most High did that to you, like He did the ancient Pharaoh, to make you to make your your pride reach to the heights of heaven and seem invincible and unstoppable. Just so when you were taken down, it'll be known in that day that there was a higher power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and you did nothing or were able to do anything without without Him allowing you to do it. Nothing was done of your own power. You were just another grasshopper, an insignificant ant, a, a termite, the basest of men. Of the fools mm -hmm. of children. That's why it tells you in Isaiah. <clears throat> children when of we fools. Get when we get delivered, the heathen are going to say, the God of Israel is a God that hides himself. They're going to know like that whole time he, he could have just delivered his children at any moment. He just hey. this was all his, his doing. Mm -hmm. When you when you get finished, what I told you in, in, the, in the up there, jump to eight, uh, chapter eight, read two down to four. Huh. And this is what we hoping for, man. Just like the Maccabees, man. Gone. It says, verse, verse 35, for thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the almighty power who seeth all things. Hey, for our what does it say back in that Job 21? He layeth up this iniquity for his children. Hey, you Edomites got to pay. You you, you got to pay for uh, Cain slaying Abel. You got to pay for your forefather Esau trying to slay, slay Jacob. You, the, the times you came against Israel when we were when we were a kingdom. The Greeks, the Romans, the Renaissance, uh, all the way up until today, you got you got a, a tab that can only be paid black, paid back in your blood, sweat, and tears. Huh. It says, "For our brethren who now have suffered a short pain are dead under Yahweh's covenant of everlasting life, but thou, through the judgment of Yahweh, shall receive just punishment for thy pride." A just punishment for thy pride. A do double unto them as they have done unto you. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. <clears throat> he that killeth with the sword must be killed must. with the sword. Mm -hmm. And the house of Jacob for a flame, and the house of Joseph for a fire. But the house of Esau shall be a stubble, and there shall be none remaining of the house of Esau. And to see in verse, when the brother read 8, chapter 8, 2 down to 4, is going basically. Basically, 
this is how we feel. Just like the brother said, you got you gonna get remembered for all those fucking things you've done in the past, present. All right, you gonna get remembered for them right here, man. All the acts you've done, using children as alligator bait, the slaughters of our our men, our women, and children, man. I read it out. Okay. Second Maccabees eight and two, and they called upon Yahweh that he would look upon the people that was trodden down of all, and also pity the temple profane of ungodly men. Hey, and that temple that that's being profaned today are his people. Hey, uh, but hey, that temple that temple is being cleaned, and new stones are being brought into it. And that that altar is being cleaned with the righteous sacrifice on it. The elect, hey, doing our best to purge ourselves of the wickedness of this world, and and getting as close to our our, our heavenly Father as we can. And then once we're Abaratas, I were of that number, that elect number that gets beamed up, a hey, in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be that righteous, perfected temple that, with those new spiritual bodies. And then through us, through our loins, it's going to come the rest of the nation perfected and righteous as well. Mm. And that he would have compassion upon the city, sore defaced and ready to be made even with the ground and hear the blood that cried unto him. And remember the wicked slaughter of harmless infants and the blasphemies committed against his name. And that he would show his hatred against the wicked. Hey, as the elder brother just went into ooh, the, uh, the slaughter of harmless infants, hey, feeding our children the alligators. Mm -hmm. And there, there was a game you Edomites used to play with the southern kingdom where you would bury a Judite kid's head up to his neck and see who could kick the child's head off. And then with the northern kingdom, you, you, you Spanish conquistador dogs. You would you would hang tie women up to trees and cut their chi living children out of their bellies. And then back in the forties, you used to have a game called hit the trigger, dunk the nigger, where you would throw a ball at like a trigger in a in a in a, a judite would fall into a tank of water. And they had another game called hit the nigger baby, where they put a a, a so called little black girl's face through a little target hole, and you could see who could throw a, a baseball at her face the hardest to make her cry. You man. What what is coming to you, Edomites, and and your children and your elderly in the kingdom? Hey, is is going to be on an unimaginable level, and we're going to laugh all the way to the bank, as the old saying goes. And I blame. I'm gonna say this. Even I think the concept of football, American football, comes from them cutting off the head of the Native, Native Americans, tossing around playing football, man. You know? complete madness. No, <clears throat> you double on the page. That's why it says. Read that last part. It says. That we hope in the most I remember his hatred for the wicked, man. Something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it says second second Maccabees eight and four. And remember the wicked slaughter of harmless infants and the blasphemies committed against his name, and that he would show his hatred against the wicked. Yeah, that's what we hoping for, man. He's gonna do it in the most grand finale way, too, man. That's why we can't wait when the most I allow this thing to get opened up on your ass, Esau. It's, it's gonna be hell to the captain, man. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Ain't nobody gonna be able to help your ass. Uh, hey, uh, Elishadia, the great demon like power. And if we're the sons of the Most High, what does that mean? The sons of the demon like power. The demon like sons of the demon, <laughs> demon like power. Yeah, man. Bon mm Elishadia. -hmm. Kind. Any brothers have any uh, closing points or precepts they want to bring out? Real quick off the comment board, this is the brother Kabar. This second Ezra is 15 and 56. Like as thou hast done unto my chosen, saith Yahweh, even so shall the Most High do unto thee and shall deliver thee into mischief. Hey, and we, we, we see the history that you've done to the children of Israel. And if you can believe it, if you can perceive it, if you can comprehend it, we're going to, we're our cap. The captivity of you Edomites under us is going to make our captivity under you look like a day of Sesame Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I can't wait to, the, to that day you become them strange fruits uh, blown in the wind of the, of, the, of, the, of the trees, man. Hanging from the trees, man. Mm -hmm. The same song, I forgot her name. It escapes me right now. Is it Billie Holiday? <clears throat> it's a woman that sings sing it too. I forgot yeah, strange, her name. Strange Fruit. Yeah, you know, that's a that's a powerful song, man. You know, to the point. 
you know, as an Israelite, you want that same thing to your enemies, man. We want we want payback. All right. We don't want we don't want no respiration, uh, uh, different money and, and 40 acres in the mule and things like that. We want your blood, man. Huh. That's Billy Holiday, strange fruit. Yeah, Billy Holiday, yeah, man. Hey, actually, uh, oh, that's the other lady right here. Uh, Nina Simone, huh? Nina Simone, yeah. No, that's the one thing about Nina Simone. <clears throat> we can't wait to the, to the tides or, or the roles being reversed, man. You you know, you're not gonna have nobody to call on, nobody to help you. Cause you really, really, you either might you really bastard. You a bastard. You a bastard children, man. You don't have no father, man. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't have no power, man. And the power that you do look into, which is uh, spirit of demon Satan, he's controlled by the Most High, man. So you don't have you don't have nothing. You don't have nothing going for you. You either might say nothing special about your red asses either, man. All right. But we're gonna get out of here though, man. Cause we'll get get started right back on. <laughs> Hey, so with that, we hope you sincere Akim were edified by this Shabbat lesson. And again, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. In peace and salutations to you sincere Akim out there. Pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.